and welcome to another VRTK tutorial video. In this video, we're going to show how we can set up snap zones, which allow us to take an interactable and snap them to a specific location in the scene, whether it's static or it's actually moving around following another object. Please consider becoming a VRTK patron. There are plenty of membership levels to sign up at, and it really helps to fund these videos. So to demonstrate the snap zones, We've got a few interactable objects that I've already set up. We've got the interactable pig, a gun, and a simple cube. The next thing we need to do is go and get the snap zone package into our project. So if we go to window, down to Tilia, then to package importer, and then if we look down the list, we can see snap zone. So we're gonna add that to our project. And once that's added, we can close the package importer window down. And now we're just going to add a simple snap zone in. So we can do that by right clicking on our hierarchy, going down to Tilia, then to prefabs, then to interactions, then to snap zone, and then we can add an interaction snap zone. And with the snap zone in the scene, I'm just gonna move the Z value so it's a bit more forward, and then I can grab and drag it up. And we can see by default our snap zone is just a very simple large cube. So we can resize this accordingly. So I'm just gonna change the scale down to 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2. And then I'm just gonna bring it a bit forward on the Z as well, so about one. And now I'm just going to manually position it somewhere near our table. So this is going to be our snap zone. And what the snap zone is, is whenever we put something in the collider of the snap zone and release it, the object will immediately snap into the position there. And if we look down the snap zone facade settings, we can see we've got some options on here. We've got transition duration. And this is how long it takes for the object to snap into position so it can slowly transition into that position over time or it can immediately snap there if we've got the transition set to zero. So for this one, we'll leave the transition duration as zero. We can also set an initial snapped interactable. So whatever interactable we put there will automatically start the scene snapped into that snap zone. We can also apply the snap zone scale. So whatever we've scaled our snap zone to, so at the moment it's 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2. When we snap something to that, it will change the scale of the object down to that scale as well. For this one, we're gonna leave it unscaled. And then we've also got the highlight always active. So by default, the highlight object that we can see here is only activated when we put our object inside the snap zones collider. If we want it to always be active so we can always see where that snap zone is, we can tick this. And then we've got the other one as well, auto snap thrown objects. This will mean that if we throw an object into the snap zone collider, it will still consider a snap. For this one snap zone that we've got set up now, we're gonna leave with these settings. So we're not gonna apply the snap zone scale. We're not gonna have the highlight always active and we're not gonna auto snap thrown objects. Also, it's worth noting that a snap zone by default will just accept any interactable into it. It doesn't care which one of these will snap, they will all snap accordingly. We'll cover in a future video how we can determine specific objects to snap to a snap zone, but for this, we're just gonna keep it simple. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate this snap zone, and then I'm gonna move this one over to the left a bit. And with this left snap zone, we can do a little bit of customization. So if we expand our snap zone, and then go into the snap destination. We can look at the destination location. This is the transform where we actually snap at the center of our object too. And then we've got the destination highlight. This is the highlight that we can see here. So if I expand this and then expand the highlight mesh container, we can see we've got the default mesh here and we can change this to whatever we want it to be. So by default, it's a cube and it's using this simple material but I'm just gonna change this for the sake of this to a sphere. I'll leave the material as is, but I could customize it however I wanted. And we're gonna collapse this one down. And then for this one, we're gonna have it, the highlight is always active. And we're gonna auto snap thrown objects to it. And I'm just gonna make the scale a little bit smaller, maybe about 0.1 all the way across. And we can see because I've scaled that down now, our collider has got smaller, but I want that collider to be the same size as the collider for this snap zone. So all I have to do is expand our snap zone again and go to the activation collision area. And we can see this has got a sphere collider on it. And if I just change that radius to two, we can see it's got big again. So if I look at both of these snap zones, we can see the collider is roughly the same size on both. And finally, I'm gonna create another snap zone, but this time I'm gonna actually attach it to my tracked alias for my left controller. So if I go into the aliases and then left controller alias, what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna make a copy of this snap zone here, and I'm gonna drag and drop it into the left controller alias, and then I'm just gonna set the position back to zero, zero, zero. And then if I just move down, and we go and have a look at this snap zone, we can see it's quite large there. I'm just gonna set this to 0 0.05, 0 0.05, 0 0.05. And actually what I wanna do with this snap zone is actually make it at the end of my interactor, so I can snap things to my interactor and then carry them around with me in the scene. So what I'm gonna do is actually make this snap zone a child of my left interactor. 
and because that interactor has got rotation applied to it it's actually negated that rotation on our snap zone but i don't want to do that so i'm going to set that back to zero and then i'm just going to move this back up our interactor so it's near our wrist so if i just move it back down the z-axis by about minus 0.15 we can say this is going to be the snap zone where we can snap things to and what i'm going to do as well is i'm going to have anything i snap into there i actually want it to shrink down so it fits within that box so i'm going to do the apply snap zone scale and i'm going to tick that on and there we go we've got three snap zones set up we've got this basic one that will only highlight when we put something into that area and when we release it will snap to it we've got this smaller one over here that we can throw objects into and they can snap into and it will always be highlighting and then we've got this one down here that will shrink the object down when we snap it and it will always be following our controller around so let's jump into the scene and see this working so we're in the scene and we can see our snap zone is always highlighting here if I was to pick up an object and we move it into this snap zone, we can see it enables the highlight and disables the highlight when we hover in the snap zone and when we remove it from the snap zone. And then if I release it in the snap zone, we can see it snaps. It's not touching the ground or anything. And the same with the cube. If I was to put the cube into this one and snap, it holds in place. And if I was to pick the gun up and snap it into the one on our controller, we can see that it shrinks in size and it's following our controller around. Now I can snap that out and I can pick the pig up. We can snap that into our controller now. Snap the gun into there, take the pig out. And we can see how snap zones are working for us. And this one, as I said, will automatically snap when something enters it. So if I drop it from really high, it will automatically snap in. If I do the same with the gun, because it's not being hovered over and I drop it, we can see the gun falls all the way through that snap zone. And there we go, that snap zone set up. I hope you found this video useful. If you have, please consider subscribing to the YouTube channel. Leave any likes, dislikes, comments down below. Please consider becoming a VRTK patron. And I'll see you for the next video. Thanks for watching and bye for now.